You know, as technicians, a big thing that we're always trying to do is interpret what we're seeing, why we're seeing it, and we want to understand it so that we can try to take steps to resolve it. And I'm starting to see where I've got a little bit of a different way of thinking about this, and uh, I haven't always been this way, but it's a, it's a technique I've developed, and I want to share it today on... You walk up to a system, you're troubleshooting it, you're trying to understand what's going on. You've come in behind somebody that has modified and changed a lot of what's happened in the system. It's not what it was when it first got created or whatever the case may be. So, especially when you're coming in behind a system that's been commissioned by somebody else. So what do we do? Our first go-to is we try to reverse engineer the whole process and try to understand where is everything, how is it already wired, how is this, how is that. And for a lot of us, I know especially for myself, you know, it, you can really struggle, especially early on, just am I thinking of this right? Am I not seeing something clearly? Like I, I'm used to seeing it, you know, the X, Y, and Z lighting out this way, wired in like this, but this particular system's wired this totally different way and it looks different and why is it looking different? Have I just not seen this before? It, am, am, is it a lack of experience on my part? Do I just not know what I'm doing? You know, da, 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 just go down a whole rabbit trail with it. What I see that, that that done to me for a long time and what I see it do to technicians I work with is they spend hours and days sometimes trying to completely reverse engineer what somebody else had done. And many times, at least in my experience, all that other person was just trying to do was make it turn on at that time. Whatever the case or situation may be, they may have not even been trying to come up with a long-term solution. Their immediate situation may have just been get it turned on. And then, you know, once they overall issue got resolved or whatever the case may be nobody ever came back to address it or make it the way it was supposed to be the first time because well things get busy it's a, it's a it's a tug and go industry and we just lose track of things whether that's internal in the same company or heck the customer changed uh companies that are servicing them you know and i've got a lot of examples about around this anywhere from the chiller side to VRFs to balance and airflows to water flows to da 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 da. So what I've come to, instead of trying to reverse engineer something I don't feel is correct, uh, I've, I've come to a point where you know, I have the confidence and the experience to stand behind this and, and just, I, you can, I, I get myself in trouble plenty by doing this, so just bear that in mind. I want to say thank you to today's video sponsor, which is CSG, Compressor Solutions Group, based out of Houston, Texas. They've also got a shop in DFW serving the Texas area, and they also can provide you compressor service nationally. They're a great group of guys. They've done a really good job with just getting their information out there. They try to really invest into training in this industry and just supporting the contractors. Reach out to Jake with any questions you have. He'll be able to take care of you, be able to help you out. They do full service and rebuilds on screw compressors and semi-hermetic recips. They've been a great friend of the channel. They've been a great friend of mine. I look forward to working with them for a long time to come. I will go through and instead of trying to reverse it, I will just start making it the way that I know it needs to be. That includes whether it be say a wiring change that's happened or whether that be a programming or commissioning issue. So when I see a system that is just not functioning the way that I understand it's supposed to function, if I can't quickly interpret what it is they were trying to do, then forget it. I'm not gonna spend any more time on it. I'm gonna start just one thing at a time, putting it back the way it needs to go, whether that's wiring in the controls or making uh, programming adjustments to get it tuned in the way that I think it should run. In that process, one of two things happens. Either I'm correct in that it was just wrong and it just needed to be corrected. So once I get everything the way that I understand it to function, 
everything just works and it works fine and it gets the result the customer is looking for and so that means it was either done wrong to begin with or again it was a temporary solution to get past their immediate situation now the second thing that happens is as i'm correcting those issues one at a time all of a sudden i see what their problem was and why they started to make the adjustments they did to it uh, heck, I've even come behind factory technicians that have commissioned systems that made these adjustments because of on-site conditions. I'll give you a real quick example. It was a YK uh, centrifugal startup, and uh, the chiller wasn't running as efficient as it could, and it was also having some surging issues. Anyway, I came in, just did a quick look over for it, and that's when I realized that the startup tech had dramatically lowered the liquid level uh, set point on the condenser barrel. Well, I got to looking into it. I just didn't quite understand why. And actually, I've done a video on this. It's uh, something to do with YK liquid levels. Anyway, so uh, what I figured out is because uh, they didn't follow their, their standard programming that they're taught from the factory. You know, the factory guys, they're taught 40% liquid level period that's the set point they want the, them to use and they don't calibrate to anything else but this was set dramatically lower than that so i recalibrated the liquid level set point to where i thought it should be and it immediately became clear that as soon as it, i started getting the liquid level where it needed to be we started having some high pressure issues we started coming up on approach and we started going into surging well then i got back over there and looked at it and realized that my flow was wrong on the condenser water loop i had too little flow and it was because we had two chillers that were flowing water through them i couldn't isolate one of them but i could the other so what i needed to do in that scenario is the automation system had uh, one condenser water pump that would run with each chiller so if only one chiller was calling but both of them were flowing only one pump would turn on and they didn't have a proper ISOs. So essentially they just needed to run two pumps. That was the actual issue that needed resolving. But to resolve the issue, instead they risk damaging the subcooler bundle by lowering the liquid level, uh, which then affects efficiency and capacity instead of just having them run a second pump to maintain flow because the plant needs ISO valves on the condenser water. So that's an example of where as I'm correcting it, it clicks of, ah, this is why they had to do that. Now at that point, if that becomes true, then either they had the best solution, which the fact that I'm there looking at it, it probably means they didn't because it's still not, it's still not good enough that the customer has to complain about it. So then my next function becomes, okay, what is the best solution? How do I take another step and make this better? And that's just, yeah, let's come up with a better secondary solution. And at that point, I have a chance to, to know that option A didn't work, so let's come up with an option B. And it's really as simple as that. So that's what it's coming down to is instead of trying to reverse engineer what who the heck knows who before you did for whatever reason you don't know their training you don't know their background stop trying to reverse engineer the guy in front of you just start putting things the way that you know they should be have some confidence in yourself and your decisions and what you've seen before and in that process you can fix it and keep in mind the reason you're there to begin with it's already broke it's already not working. What you're really doing is just working through the process that everybody else has also struggled with, but you're, you'll be learning along the way. And you can't be so scared to break it that you can't even fix it to begin with. And I think that's the paralyzing effect that I see that happens. Uh, we, we, we're scared to break it. Somebody had to have done it this way for some reason. Why was that? And so we get so focused on that that we just don't even take the time to start correcting it. Because if we did, it would probably many times becomes clear that the guy in front of you knew less about it than you did. It just, it, that's my thoughts. That's my process. Uh, there's things like this. I just don't always realize I've got a certain way of thinking about it. Not everybody shares that way of thinking about it. I'm communicating that to you. Hope you'd enjoyed this. I'll see you guys around.